died and they were selling it. Three hundred dollars, I think, was the first car. And I went to the bank to try to borrow the money. I had a service day out account there. Oh no, you didn't finance my book. I said, well, how about a personal loan? Well, we'd have to ask you what it went for. <laughs> they wouldn't give me a loan. So I, there was a loan company across the street, and I knew the guy that worked there. So I went over to see him. Oh, yeah, no problem. He, he gave me a check for $300, and I went up and bought that car. Well, what was it? The Chevy, that black Chevy. Remember when we went there? I didn't put up that. <laughs> that was the first car I ever owned. Nice, you can ask me to borrow my money. <laughs> What do you want to tell me about that? Yeah, that boy it shined like crazy. It was sitting underneath this hay all of it. It didn't get any sun on it or anything. Yeah. But dirt, it was dirty as heck. But boy, when I washed it down, cleaned it up, boy, that was a nice car. Yeah, that was the first car I owned. That was a good one. And one time, uh, David had a car and it blew up. He run it without oil in it. And the motor was going to jack the dismantle the whole thing, clear down to the uh, engine and rebuild it. Put new bearings in that um, behind the house. Him and I tore it down. David. I never did any work like that before, but we went, we got it together and it went on, so I sold it. He got rid of it right away before it blew up. But he tore the whole thing apart, and then David would stand there with him, Dad, that's not right, Dad. You don't do that, Dad. And he just went on and did it, but he thought it was right, and it was. Do you guys have a favorite movie that you saw, I mean, throughout the entire life? What? What? Favorite movie. Movies. King Kong. King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you used to always show us Mary Poppins when we used to come as yeah, children. Yeah, Mary Poppins, but what was the one that, that Joey Andrews was in that I loved? Oh, Sound of Music. Sound, Sound of Music. Sound of Music. The hills are alive. I've never seen that. I've heard of it. We played it here over yeah. and over again. When the kids were little, that's all they wanted to see when they came. Eric Poppins and Sound of Music. Do you have a favorite I, team? I always liked John Wayne and these cowboys. I oh, the, the old westerns? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved that kind of Years ago, when I was just a little shaver, a friend of mine across the street, his dad and mine, had a hardware store. Well, he owned it or worked there, I don't know. But this buddy of mine, he was, we'd run around together. And uh, at that time, for 10 cents, you go to a movie, or see a movie at 10, for 10 cents. And that was all day long, and they repeated and repeated. They would start at 1 o'clock, and they'd play the movie for two hours, and then they'd have two I again. Get you could stay all day and all night, and, and they packed lunches. The kids used to pack lunches and stay all after Saturday afternoon. Watch the same movie over and over? All day long, yeah. <laughs> and it had comics and newsreels, and it was fun. It didn't have a lot of commercials like that. Right. Nobody. There was a jump place down over the hill. And I remember going around picking up iron and stuff to go down and sell it. To them. They'd give you 10 or 15 cents. You get a wagon load of something of iron. And Coke bottles. And Coke bottles and different. Two cents a bottle. That's a lot. So, uh, that's how I got one. Once in a while, I couldn't get the money and he'd get get his dad to give him, give him 10 cents and he'd take me money. Aww, thank you. That was when I was a little shaver. <laughs> and we lived up top of the hill we lived, but you know, with the house we lived in. They used to live over by the coke plant. Remember oh. the coke plant when we lived up on First Street? The, I, I remember yeah. Honey Bear. Yeah, it was right back at Honey Bear's okay. where his house was. It was down by the hill. We used to get out over there and swim. Place they call it B A B Bear Ass Beach. We get down <laughs> over the railroad track. We had to walk over the railroad track. Oh my gosh! And we'd have to. Railroad had guys on their detectives that they'd chase you out of there. So. So do you have any advice for future generations, or? Do you have any advice for future? Yeah, I mean. I'm sure this tape will be shown to, you know, Terry's grandkids and five kids, my grandkids, stuff like that. And I'm sure they'll be excited to see you guys. 
any life advice? How do you think the world has changed? Is it for the better or for the worse? Much, much worse. Much it's worse. Very, very sad. It's very sad. I feel so sorry for the young people today. Television ruined it. Right. Well, and that is another, that was kind of an uh, interesting thing. When we went into our first or second apartment uh, down near his service station at the uh, Jefferson Apartments, we got our first television. And when they came in and we started to watch that, I said to Jack, that is the worst thing that has ever happened to our country. Really? Because I could look at that and see what could go and develop into that, all the bad that could come out of that. Good too. There are good programs, but so much bad. Our society has deteriorated uh, so many, many things that we didn't do when we were uh, young. Don't give your kids a television show. Oh, computers are no. <laughs> computers computer, are now. They'll get. They're much worse than computers. You know, they'll get education on a computer. There's so many bad places to go, but. Um, when I remember you guys down there. Boy, you got computers early down there in almost time. Yeah, with Anthony and Jeffrey, they got them. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everything has changed. Uh, when we grew up, it was a very innocent world. We never heard of the stuff that they do here today on television. Uh, cursing and swearing was looked down on. Uh, we never talked about sex. That was never brought up. You, you might go be married before you knew anything about sex. And it was so innocent, it was just pure, it was so wonderful. Like whenever we uh, were young, we went out, we went dancing, and it was fun. We went for the fun of dancing, and now they had a dirty dancing that's almost too vulgar for people to look at. Right. And it was just, it was jitterbug, we had a crazy good time, and we square danced, and, and, and we just had a wonderful time. It was an innocent time. We didn't have any thoughts about what could we do to get out of here and that kind of stuff. It was have fun now. We're dancing. We're having fun. And, and um, everybody was innocent. And you, you, uh, you uh, have to have you have to be married. You have to get married. You have a baby before you were married for nine months. Three thirty. put the chicken on. I thought four o'clock. Why a disgrace, you know? Today, is, uh, this is how our values have changed. I mean, you asked me how everything has changed so drastically, and uh, people, you know, pornographic stuff has never thought or talked about it, or something like that. And it's just everything is so different. People uh, dress differently now. When I started to wear men's clothing, and then they became more manly. And I remember when our kids were men started to wear women's clothes. <laughs> When our kids were in high school in 1969, your mother graduated in 1970, 71, 72, 74, 76, our kids graduated. And in 1971, they got the dress code changed at Father High School, the dress code. Other than that, the kids dressed nice. They had nice clothes on. The girls wore dresses, and they looked nice, and they wore skirts, and they looked great. The guys wore a nice shirt, and, and, and uh, I don't know whether they wore jeans or not, but they, they wore trousers, you know, and it wasn't... Catholic and girls wore uniforms. Yes, and when Carol and Terry and all the kids went That's to school, by different thing. They, they wore nothing but uniforms, a blue jumper and black and white glass. And it was wonderful. They had 1,200 kids that went to school in uniform. They wore this. Every year they got two new jumpers and five new glasses. And that was all the clothes that they had for school. And it was a wonderful time. Nobody was, oh, you've got Nike shoes. Oh, you don't have Nike shoes. Nothing like that. It was no brand name. It wasn't a brand name mention. Then, in 71, at Butler High, they changed the dress code to go into slacks and do different kinds of stuff. And I worked in the school district at that time. And I was in a room where there was a, the head of the, the math department and the head of the English department. And they were discussing the dress code. And they were disgusted. They hated it. The teachers hated it with a passion. And he's this man teacher, he said, I was going down the wing the other day and we got came to the lockers and he said, 